join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. have guessed, a megapolis surrounded by green parks, evergreen palm trees in the background, like brilliant skyscrapers. One of the most exotic places on earth. We're here in the harbour at Sydney, Australia. And we're about to embark on a Northern Territory, as the Aussies call it, up top, buffalo hunt. In the previous episode, I promised to give you a basis for comparison of the giant crocodile Brutus. Now you will have the opportunity to see from close up, maybe the biggest free ranging crocodile in the world. Morgan, you're our host and our tour guide today. We're going to see jumping crocs here on the Adelaide River near Darwin in Australia. So, will we see some fairly good sized crocs today? Yeah, we'll have to see a couple, but uh, it's going to be the most territorial amount. One's the Dominator, the downstream, and the old Brutus was upstream. We've had a long going war for years, they tend to think out of each other's way. So, occasionally they do have a fight, which is, they did yesterday. They did. They have a fight over yeah. females. Breeding season now, so they're starting to move around. So. Oh, okay. We're a little bit more careful, we're always careful, but you know, they're, they're certainly being more aggressive this time. Right. The weather's starting to heat up a bit, probably knows. And yeah. how, how big are these crocs, they weight? Uh, they weigh about 800 kilos. 800 kilos? Up to about five and a half, six meters. Up to six meters, wow. 80 or 90 years old. So 80 or 90 years old, wow, yeah. Yeah, that's a tremendous, tremendous uh, opportunity for us to come and film here and maybe see Brutus and Terminator. So, mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we look forward to it. Thanks no very much. No worries. No okay, nice thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. True? It can't be true. I know they were large. They just see now. They just see the tide. Just start. All right. Put the mud banks a little bit there. Hunting crocodiles is forbidden, so we will make an ultimate shot with my new camera.
Not only the crocodiles accepted the tasty bits of meat from the captain, the birds of prey wanted their part of the bribe too, in order to entertain the tourists with their attractive, aerobatic movements. Just what I needed. I think Vlado and I took some very good photos. be interested to know whether the tricks which a captain taught the crocs would not one day tempt them to take, instead of little bits of meat from the end of a rope, something bigger from the boat. Here was a large one. At its approach, all the other crocodiles disappeared. The weight of the monster did not allow it to propel more than half of its body out of the water, but it was quite an impressive sight. And here is Brutus given that name probably by his brutal smile. What would you say? How long is this creature? Let me help you with the evaluation. Our boat is about 15 meters long, and I was standing right at its end, half of me over the rails so I could get closer to the evil eye of the crocodile. It was a good thing the other crocs did not dare come close while Brutus was here. What did the monster's menu include? Maybe other crocodiles? And why not people? Sure, we, we might even put you on television. Oh, no, really? <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. We left Brutus at the beach, but he did not want to leave us and followed us to the middle of the river. He wanted something more.
Trying to bite off the steel wire, Brutus leaned against the boat and rocked us pretty hard. I was so engrossed in filming that I forgot that I was looking at a TV screen, but was inches from his mouth. The power and strength he showed while inadvertently rocking our little ship made me glad we had not found a smaller boat for our filming. Here was the answer. Why not one of the fishermen along the river had agreed to take us when they heard what we needed the boat for? We left Brutus in the water, even though I wanted to hunt a saltwater crocodile very much, but the law did not allow it. For now, I would have to be content with the camera. This time I had been within a hair's breadth of death. No equal opportunity here. I had the camera and Brutus his huge jaws. It was a good thing the captain pulled me away before I had my head torn off. A camera is a dangerous thing because you lose sight of the real situation and the distance to the object or the subject as in our case. Dominator. We saw Brutus and Dominator, the two big male crocs. Breeding season here, they seem to be tired out, so we still got some great action. Still got some good shots, huh? Didn't we? Yeah, got some great stuff. Right at the boat. <laughs> Mary River Safaris is one of the few places on Earth where you can hunt some of the antelope species which have become extinct in their original habitat in India and Africa. Trees red at the bottom, what's that? Yeah, it's one of the common Australian trees called a bloodwood tree, and it uh, seeps that gap. Uh, it, seeps, it seeps the sap out. Sap out. Yeah. Yeah. And is it not dying? No, no, it's not dying. But it just does that, it seeps it naturally. Boy, it's red, crystally. It is crystal. It looks like blood. Yeah, we use it for coloring for a lot of our applications. You do? Yeah. yeah. Do the aboriginals use that to color the rocks? Yeah, the aboriginals use that to make sure they play, color the rocks, yeah. paint themselves and stuff like that. Look at them. Yeah. It's a bloodwood bug. A bloodwood bug? What's this other one? Yeah, that's another type of bloodwood bug. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, it's moving. Yeah. They're more alive, yeah, look. This one looks pretty dangerous. <laughs> Besides, there were many boars too, thought to be here and everywhere in Australia, a harmful game because they are an imported species. Even though it was young, this water buffalo provided good practice. An actual shot in a real life situation, even if unsuccessful, is far more useful than hundreds of shots at a target. Stalking an animal to a shooting distance and trying to find out what movements would provoke it to attack, to flee, or to watch you with interest, that was invaluable.
The wild boar is a nuisance for some, while for me it is a trophy. Everybody has a different value system. Now I only had to take the trophy I had come here for, a bantang. This buffalo species comes from India, but it has been banned for hunting there. Its population is on the brink of extinction because the locals kill it for meat. The only huge herd in the world where its hunting is allowed was here. Well managed, the animals increased their population by 5% yearly. It was permitted to hunt only old buffalo, which had passed the age for breeding. I was looking for such an exact specimen. There was no room for mistakes. I only saw the rump of a bull behind the eucalyptus tree. With its head bent to the ground, it was eating something and was not aware of my approach. The only witnesses to the stock were a few kangaroos, which curiously watched me my every movement, ready to flee and scare off the bantang too. I did not know if it was a big old specimen or a young animal. I could not see the horns. And when I had the opportunity, there would be just a second to estimate the trophy. I drew the bow and started moving sideways to examine the horns of the animal. I would soon see it, and it would see me. Just not big enough. not big enough. So here's a big old lone bull. He's uh, all over mud on the back. Is he an old bull or a young bull? You think? You no, know, I, I think he's an old bull. He's uh, uh, got a little bit of tendency to run just over there. After meeting personally all the inhabitants here, it only remained to see one of the most valuable acquisition, a herd of scimitar oryx. This antelope, known as the Sahara oryx, became extinct in its homeland, Africa. The antelope were exterminated by the regime of Muammar Gaddafi, and this herd here is one of the last hopes for the beautiful antelope species. Scimitar horned orcs. Oh no, I said it. And thanks to guys like Gaddafi, they're extinct in their natural environment. But they're found here near Darwin in northern Australia and in Texas. And that herd is a tremendous resource. It's actually being managed. There's so many old males that they're managing the old males and building the herd at the same time. 